Over the last two years, I have doubted my decision with buying Zell because after I got her, she got this really terrible cough. Took her a month to get over a cough, and I had to take her to the vet. I've never had a horse with such a bad cough. Really never had a horse with a cough. So that was new. But um, anyways, then after that, I, I started riding her, but then I noticed her legs were wonky and clunky. And so after a lot of just, uh, I, I took her to a different vet and had all these different exams done. Anyways, after all these things, I just felt like, oh my God, like I don't even know if she'll be able to be ridden the rest of her life because the vet couldn't really find anything wrong. He he found this one area that looked like maybe the muscle was torn. And so he put had her put on like a six month rest. So he did that. And I, you know, tried slowly working with her again. And I just, it didn't seem like it was any better. So I got really discouraged and I just, I haven't done much with her. And for me, you know, I know most anybody else will be like, oh, she's fine. She can run around the pasture. She can buck and kick. She's fine. But I just, I'm the type of person that I don't want to put my horse in pain if I don't have to, you know, and I ended up, um, closing down my therapeutic writing business, um, because it just, it was time to move on to freedom for the taking it, through the different circumstances. It just, I ended up realizing I don't have safe enough horses for that. Um, and so it's, it was time to pivot and to, and it felt right. It felt completely right. Even though it was hard, it felt right. Like it was time to, to start my nonprofit. But all that being said, like with Zell, I've been just been really kind of cautious. And I thought a lot of times I'm like, what did I do? I spent all this money to buy a horse. Now she can't be ridden. And you know, like it's frustrating. And, but I love her to death. Her personality is amazing. She's just my buddy. She's the sweetest thing ever, but she's so sensitive and she's so spooky and she's so young and I had a really bad fall in her last year. I had pulled her out and started to try training her again and I was riding and everything was going great and then this leaf came and blew along the ground and scared her and she like reared up and f jumped in midair and pivoted and ran the opposite direction and I fell off the other side and I hurt my fingers really bad. It took a whole year for them to heal and I still have one pinky that if I squeeze it, it hurts. It's got like this permanent damage done to it. Anyways, I've just gone back and forth. Like, you know, should have I got her? Should I not got her? And anyways, it's been hard, you know? And, and sometimes we just learn. We just learn through life. And I just find the kind of the point of, you know what? She's a wonderful horse. And I don't want to just think that she only has value if I can ride her. And so I just started changing my mindset. Like she's, she's my friend. She's my, you know, my delight. She's my podcast partner for heaven's sakes, you know, like she's famous. Um, so I just started changing the way that I think about it. Um, and that's been really helpful to realize I don't have to think about my animals and my horses specifically as just this, you know, this way of like, I'm going to ride you, you're, I'm, you know, I own you, you're my property, you know, and I've always been very much an animal person, but you know, having a horse that I wasn't sure if I could ride, especially with how young she is, that was difficult for me. But all that, <laughs> sorry, this is a long story, but all of that goes to like, now I pulled her out um, just last week and I went to do some round penning with her again. And I thought, man, last time she just got so worked up and she was just running around scared. And I didn't like the way that felt like I, but I wasn't, I was kind of just in doing the normal things that I know to do. But if there's one thing that I have learned, that's really important about horse training. It's that every horse is different and there is no one way to train a horse that works for all horses. You have to adjust to fit the situation with every horse. And so I decided I took Zell back to the round pen last week and it was a beautiful sunny day. It was warm. It was delightful. And I thought, I'm going to pretend like Zell has never been trained before. Like I was just given this horse that has hardly been handled and never been trained. Nobody's ever been on her back. And so then I started round penning her with that in mind. And it was a whole different experience. Zell stayed very calm. 
She stayed in her thinking brain. She wasn't reacting. She was responding to me. Her eyes stayed soft. She never bucked. She never kicked at me. She never reared up. She never ran around. She didn't break a sweat. And I was able to get her to do, you know, I didn't ask her to do a lot, but I was able to get her to circle both directions and even gate both, you know, go up into her gate both directions. And it was so much better. And I thought, you know what? I think part of the problem or probably the main part of the problem was that I know that she's been ridden and trained and has been able to do all these things. But the problem is because that was put in her, all that training was put in, smashed in in 30 days, it had a lot of holes. And I was talking with Raina about this when I, when we met up with her last weekend, you know, she said to, to be able to teach a horse to do all of those things in that short amount of time, there are going to be some major holes in her training. And so horses can't, they can't retain all of that information. They can't re keep up with that because it was smashed in so fast and so quick and so hard that it, it erodes over time. It erodes. So the important thing with all of my horses that I've worked really hard to do is to, to put a good foundation in. And I realized that I had gotten Zell. And then, of course, all the stuff with their legs and stuff put put all the training off. But then I'm still coming back to it with the mindset that, you know, well, she's been ridden before and she's learned all this stuff, but it eroded. It, it kind of just, she was reacting and instead of responding. And so none of that stayed. It's the same thing of if you, you know, <clears throat> you study to pass a test or you study to learn something. When you study to pass a test, you can cram, cram, cram the night before and go pass the test the next day and get pretty good grades. But if you're studying to learn, you take a long time. You, you have to let that really seep into your body and into your brain so that you will retain that information. And so Zell didn't retain it. Um, and it's not fair to her. And so I'm, I'm actually really excited because I feel like I have the opportunity to give Zell the start that she was never given before. She had this really unfair start in life and it was too much for her. It was too much. And, and you can, you know, you can force too much on horses and cause them to kind of go mentally crazy a little bit. Um, and some horses deal with that different ways. Uh, Raina told me that she had a horse that ended up cribbing for the rest of his life. And if you don't know what that means, it means they kind of chew on wood. Um, um, they will put their mouth on a piece of wood and like pull back and uh, inhale air. Anyways, it's kind of a way to give themselves a dopamine release, but it's like this coping skill, almost like smoking because they're, they had so much stress put on them in such a short amount of time. So I don't know if any of this <laughs> information is interesting to you guys, but it's interesting to me. So I wanted to talk about it and I thought it would be cool to kind of give this backstory on Zell especially since I want to do an episode where I do some training with her so you can understand the the aspect that I, the you know the outlook that I have on it and the direction I'm going to be moving with her training and um, yeah maybe you can come along with me on that journey because I always learn so much about myself and so last time at the end of my training session Ava came up to me and she said mom um, what what do you have to say about today? Can you, can you say something about your training session? And I said, slow down. And that's what I felt like Zell had taught me. I need to slow down, slow everything down, return, go back and build a really good foundation. And it's going to take a lot of time, but you know what? I have time because I'm not rushing to get her to be rideable for students. And I love to not have that pressure on my horses because uh, you know, it's not really fair to them. So I get to do this in a way that's honoring to Zell and I'm going to learn right alongside her. I know. And for me, it's hard for me to slow down in life. It is so hard. I am this like, if, 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 yeah, sorry, if anybody is, has the mentality of 30 day training, it would be me just like, not that I would do that to my horses, but like, that's how I go through life. Like 